Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Celtic Files. There was this replay I always wanted to show you, but never got around to it, until now. In this video you will see me driving my Jack Panther 2, and I am joined by Eddie in his ISU-152. We are on Nuravanka. I have chosen this 5 mostly, because it shows just what you can do, if you are in a platoon. Eddie and I will take advantage of the infamous forest that provides maximum cover and camouflage for our machines. I want to say that this was a patch 8.9 or 8.10 game, but I am not 100% sure. Now look at this. This was a 39%er according to XVM. That is brutal. If we want to win this, we'll need to do something special indeed. Or perhaps, we can hope that the enemy team may get a bit overconfident. Early on, the game develops in a typical fashion with our team advancing on the eastern flank through the forest. For Eddie's ISU and my JP2, this is very good indeed. We need to hurt the enemy as much as we can, if we want to have a chance of winning this. We haven't spotted their tanks at the eastern flank yet, but that will happen any second now. Oh there they are. And I have caught a KV-5 with his pants down. We score a solid hit. Now if I reload in time, I'll be going for them again. I am pretty sure that that one also went in. He is one of the enemy's better players, so I am quite happy. That shot was badly aimed and bounced off that prototype over there, but no matter, someone else secures the kill. So at this point I must confess that I am a bit surprised. Our team is holding its own. Whatever the XVM win chance might be, our team is in the stronger position right now. True, our western flank looks a bit thin, but earlier we had spotted a lot of enemy attacks in the southeastern corner of the map. I am guessing they are still there. There is the KV-4. He's getting hit once. And twice. And Eddie takes out the enemy's box tech. Looks like the KV-4 is in cover. I am beginning to realize that the western flank may get overwhelmed. I am definitely keeping an eye on this end of the map. But first we need to smack that KV-5 around a little bit. Oh and Eddie has just taken out that KV-4. That KV-4 was in stealth, so that was a great shot indeed. Anyways, now it is time to head back to base. Our IS-6 is in big trouble. 3 versus 1, and 2 of the enemies are KV-1s's. I am trying to support him, but my first shot at the Type 58 misses. I am having another go. That was better, he certainly felt that. But it was too late to save the iOS 6. Now they will be coming for us, but they have no idea that I am here. I now realize that we have two tanks that are AFK in our base. That's just great. I am having a look around. Eddie is coming back to support me, and we are still in the game. I am now pre-aiming at the likely location of the KV-1S. My apologies for screwing up the camera a little bit in the upcoming sequence. Just keep your eye on the mini-map. KV-1S spotted. That's one down. Our team has spotted two enemies close to their base. I am trying to get the iOS 6. At 540 meters, that was a great shot. These German TDs really have fantastic guns. Sure, they do not have the brute force of the Russian BL-10, but they are so accurate, and the high shell velocity makes long-range shots like the one you have just seen, possible. Unfortunately things start to go wrong for our team. The Type 58 has just taken out our AFK KV-1S, and we also lost our OV. We are now two tanks down, and our ARL is also AFK. 
Whether or not we'll have the chance in this game will largely depend on our opponent. Many of them will undoubtedly have Vex VM installed and thus are aware of their win chances. Eddie and I were hoping that perhaps they would be overconfident. We decided that, for now, our best bet is to remain in the cover of the forest and let them make the move. If they come at us one at a time, then they shall come to regret it. Eddie and I have two distinct advantages. First, we are in a platoon, and we will coordinate our attacks. Second, we are both in badass tanks. That's especially true for the ICU 152 of my platoon mate Eddie. But of course, we need to be very careful. The enemy also has one of those, and its driver is no slouch. Oh there he is. We shut him down hard, and Eddie picks up his third kill. Unfortunately, our friend in the PZS FL5 got taken out by the enemy's artillery, and now we have the Type 50 to deal with. If he spots me, I will be in big trouble. I must not allow that to happen. Here he is. This is it. Gotcha. My sixth sense alarm did not go off, so I remain undetected. I reload, and the IS-6 is next. A good hit leaves him on about 100 hit points. He is now an easy kill for us, and I don't expect him to be much of a threat anymore. Eddie meanwhile takes care of business too. He is now on 4 kills, and he thankfully evades the artillery shell. There. We have pulled the game back, and I am sure the enemy is beginning to take us seriously. They have really dropped the ball. They came at us, one at a time, instead of doing a coordinated attack. We all have seen this time and time before. This is what happens in pub matches. Uncoordinated attacks means teams are giving away their numerical advantage, and at the end they often lose the game, even though it was already all but won. Back to the replay. We have more than 6 minutes to go, and Eddie and I have decided to camp here a little bit longer. If the enemy makes this easy for us, why would we change our strategy? Did you see that artillery shell? The enemy arty player is already on 2 kills, and he knows what he is doing. He keeps blind fire in our location, hoping to get a lucky hit. Now there are even more blind shots directed at our location, but so far we have not gotten hit yet. It was right about this time when Eddie and I realized that they may not come for us after all. This is beginning to get a bit boring, but trust me, I would not have selected this fight if there wasn't a twist to come. I'll let the protagonists speak for themselves. Hey man, I think they got scared. Yeah no shit. Because you scared them. Me? What did I do? Well you can't just run around and one shot people and expect them to be happy about it. Then don't get one shotted. Anyways, I think they have had enough. Do you think they play for a draw? Looks like their already player clearly isn't. But a draw? That's not going to happen, I promise you that. I'll tell you what, we'll wait a little longer, but when the timer reaches three and a half minutes or so, we'll go for their base. You want to cap? Seriously? Sure why not? Look we have an AFK at base. In case they do move on our cap, we'll know about it, and our machines are fast enough to turn around and make it back if needed. Even an AFK tank is still good for spotting. True and if we know their positions, we can decimate them. Still, it's a bit risky. All they need is one tank to reset us, and we won't have enough time to win the game. Dude. That already almost got you. No shit. He's not giving up, is he? Nope. Anyways, call it gut instinct, but I have a feeling that we may be catching them with their pants down. I think they expect us to just sit here. Okay, alright. How long do you reckon we should wait? Another minute I think. And we should keep our arty here, so we can reset the cap in the unlikely event that they actually do cap. What do you think? Sure. Makes sense. Oh look there is our arty asking. 
Well? Well what? Well go ahead and tell him already. Alright. Just a second. Oops, I accidentally hit reloading. I can see that. Damn. Damn it. Hello L, just how hard can it be? But did you see that they are calling this a draw? That ain't going to happen. Time to get going Eddie. You got it mate. You go on ahead, I'll hang back just a little bit. I'm just going to tell our friend what we're doing. Roger that. You sure you're up to this? I mean the tapping thing. Yes I'm sure. Oh and you can bite me. LOL. Looks like our friend is in agreement. So then let's get it done. Right behind you bro. Eddie, let's not forget about their arty player. He's quite good. He'll be looking for knock down trees, and the last thing we want to do is, give our position away. Just about everything depends on it. Sure thing. I hope my Russian driver isn't drunk. Oh he is calling a draw again. Do you think he's serious? They could also just be bluffing. Draw my ass. This is not going to end in a draw. I'll tell you what else, as long as I don't see some red dots on the mini-map near our cap, we are going to push on. We just have to stay on the far south border of the map to avoid getting spotted from the hill near their base. And whatever you do, don't forget those trees. You don't want to run over them. Damn it! LOL, you're such a tool. God damn it. I ran over another one. Haha. Ha. Looks like it's your German driver that had too much schnapps. I'm afraid the commander has to take the blame for that. I am a bit surprised we have not been spotted yet. You know what that could mean? Yes that they're not at their base, and probably start attacking our base very soon. That would be a disaster. But it does not matter now. It's too late to change tactics. I am checking the corner to see if the RD hides there. You know what, I don't think he is here. 1 minute 40 to play, I'd say it's time to get our butts into the camp. I agree. Since this is a standard battle, we don't need a lot of time to cap. With two tanks in the cap, we need just 50 seconds. If they are far enough away, they won't make it back. Let's go in at the same time. Alright, I am keeping my eye on the left side. I suggest you watch the right side. Got it. Still 35 seconds to go. They should be here any second now. I agree. They can't be far away from their camp. Their two Russian heavies are easily fast enough. But their SFL5 not so much. Right. 20 seconds mate. Where are they? I wish I knew. Ten seconds. They will be coming. Five seconds. Oh my god. What? I S6 it our base? I don't believe it. We got it mate. Ha ha ha. How can they be so stupid? I am lost for words. So what happened here? How did they manage to lose this game? There were several factors, but at the end they simply failed to reset the cap, and most notably one player in particular. And here he is, earlier in the fight, right before he gets hit by a shell from my JP2. Now we're moving forward to the end of the fight. Eddie and I have been capping for more than 30 seconds at this point, and watch where he actually is getting spotted. He is outside my draw distance, so you can't actually see his tank, but you can see that he is actually moving towards our camp. He threw the game away. All you needed was to head back to the camp, land one hit, and we would not have had enough time to camp. But of course, that means he would have died in the process, and apparently he was not willing to do that. But then, neither of his teammates couldn't be bothered either. 
the SFL5 driver was probably already AFK, having declared this game a draw, with 3 minutes left on the clock. And the 1S driver? Let's just not even go there. In summary, this was a mind-boggling defeat by an enemy that should have crushed us, but failed so comprehensively. I don't like winning by capping, but this victory put a big smile on our faces. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and I would be happy if you rated it down below. Take care. This is Celtic signing off.